Welcome back to the garage. I'm going to do another uh, customer video today on this 99 Suburban here. He's been chasing a bit of a bug for a little while with it. Uh, stalling, it cutting out. So I guess finally it started to set a uh, PO340, which is a cam sensor, uh, camshaft position sensor code. So I'm going to scan it, see what codes it has, see if I can get it to repeat. I've looked at it a couple times, scanned it, never really had any codes to go off of and haven't actually been able to get it to act up so he needs it this weekend to tow a trailer and move so i'm going to do what i can to see if i can figure out what's causing it to shut down and and the hesitating and all that because it's definitely not going to be safe for the trailer so uh so yeah we're going to get into this and see if we can figure out why this thing's acting up Okay, so it has a PL340 code in it. I did not have a check engine light. Alright, I'm going to clear it. No codes. I'll start it. Okay, so I went ahead and removed the air, air, uh, the air intake. I'm gonna go down here. I want to see if this engine. I don't remember 100% if this engine will run without the cam sensor or not. Like there's anything wrong with it. Okay, we'll leave that unplugged. I'm gonna see if it'll start. All right, let's see. Yeah. I set a cam sensor code now. Okay. Still has. Uh, so it still starts and runs. I was afraid of that. Okay, I was afraid of that. This will run with the cam sensor disconnected. So now I'm gonna try plugging it back in and unplug it while it's running and see if it stalls. All right. Okay, cam sensor plugged back in, clear the codes. When I get rid of the cam sensor code, I know I'm going to have the mass airflow code. Clear codes. No codes. All right. Start it up. Mass airflow. No cam signal code. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to climb up here and unplug it now. Nope. See? It doesn't make any difference. I plug it in, I unplug it, and it's not going to do anything but set a code. It shouldn't make the engine stall or cut out at all. What that tells me is that the computer losing the cam signal isn't going to make the engine shut down it started it started with it disconnected um, I plugged it in cleared the codes and everything came out here and you saw I unplugged it with it running with no cam sensor code or nothing and it didn't make the engine stall so I'm gonna to have to say that the cam sensor is not gonna not gonna do that right here where I'm standing see if I can get it
There it is. Right where I'm standing, I saw that oil drip underneath the front of the truck. And that's just a short bit of time. I started it and moved it and parked it here right before I started doing this uh, video. So it's got a pretty good leak out of the... I'm going to guess that's leaking out of the front of the motor. But I'm, let's get under there and take a look. Flashlight. Let's see what we got going on. Yeah, I'm going to say that's going to be dripping right off the front of the oil pan. Okay, so that component right there. Let me zoom in. Um, I'm going to guess my problem might actually be down here being the crank sensor. Now, I know for a fact it cannot run without the crank sensor. And being that that wiring's all oil soaked. I'm gonna go start it up, get back down here, and see if I can uh, make it turn off by moving those wires. I'm gonna bet you that if we touch that right there, let me zoom in again. Is that bare wire ready? I think I just found the problem. Let's see if we can get a better view at it this this angle. That right there. That right there is the crankshaft sensor. And that looks pretty bad. I'm gonna guess that if I get under here and move on this, Bet you I'm going to find the problem. Alright, let's fire this up again. Okay. Now, uh, go down here again. Let's try it. See that? Boom, there it is. Hear that? Listen. Listen. You hear the fuel pump? I don't know if you can hear it or not. I can hear it. I can hear other things clicking. Okay. Yeah. I do this. I can hear things clicking and turning on. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but... I'm going to run back to my favorite place and get, um, get a crankshaft sensor because it's, it's leaking. I'm sure it's leaking actually through the, through the connector while well, it's coming out of the connector. So I know the, the sensor's bad. I'm going to get a sensor and a connector and fix this thing up. So I'll be right back. All right. Get down here and get this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm just going to disconnect. I'm going to go ahead and pull the crank sensor out. Now that wiring, the wiring goes over here to the power steering pump. I'm surprised that hasn't been deleted yet. Anyways, I'm going to unplug that. Uh, yeah. Runaway flashlight. All right. I can get it. I'm gonna go this way. Ah, I got it. All right, take that off. Then pull the crank sensor out. Get this bolt here. Ah, that one holds it in. Let's pull the whole thing out. There we go. The whole sensor and everything loose. Okay, so what I've done here, this is the power steering. Uh, I forget what they call that thing on the power steering pump. GM ended up deleting that. Most of these are just zip tied off the side somewhere. Uh, here's our crank sensor. So earlier when I was pushing on the wiring and I made it stall, this is where I was pushing right here. 
was pushing on this and you can see I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see the bare wire I haven't even unplugged the connector yet I just got underneath and I pushed on this harness here like this and you can see and then after it stalled every time I touched it it would make the fuel pump turn on and I could I think it was pulsing injectors and all kinds of stuff because I was making the signal mess up this is the signal here that will make the cars quit running this is an absolute must-have it every time this thing glitches for a second the engines gonna stumble so we're gonna go ahead and replace this I have brand new brand new ones here so I'm gonna cut this back until it's good and see there was a a ground I had to take off I gotta hit went ahead and pulled it up here I'm gonna unloom all this back to where the wire is good and fix it up and put in a new sensor and a new connector actually so like this connector was already broken and it looks like it was glued in let's see if it'll unplug I want to see if it's full of oil there we go So well, actually it's not full of oil so and it's, sometimes you gotta, when you take these out on these Chevys I've seen where they will touch you know what I think I'm gonna do um, I was expecting this to be full of oil like it sometimes they leak It is dry in there. So it's not actually leaking through the sensor like I thought. So I'm going to clean this up and put a new O-ring on it and put it back in. And I'm going to save the guy the money on a sensor. It's about $70 that I don't think we're going to waste money on. Alright, see if I can do this without dropping everything where we can where you guys can see what I'm doing so again like I said I'm gonna clean this up put a new o-ring on it because the oil was not coming from inside and honestly it looks like a GM sensor and these didn't have a high failure rate so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up re o ring it and use it again and save him the money all right go ahead and start taking this tape off mind the traffic all right so and open this up here yeah look at this is all look at that we got some new loom I'm gonna new I'm gonna reloom it and do everything get this up here probably go that's probably good the wire feels okay up here There we go, there it is. Let's see what we got here. See if this will zoom a little bit. Get my camera all dirty. So right here you can see the wires are, look pretty good. They're a little oily but the, the insulation is not coming off. And you get right here where it was taped and it's all oil saturated and they're stuck together so I'm gonna leave that and then you get right here and you can see the bear see that bear wire this right here I'm sure 
was where the connection problem was happening. This is bare, bare wire right here. It's a connector. So. Get this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and loom it back to that point. I use quality non insulated connectors. I use quality heat shrink. I buy this heat shrink, it has the glue in it. I buy it at the speed shop. Okay, got this done. You can see the glue there from the so it is epoxied inside. All right, well, that's pretty much what we ended up with there. Um, I have some loom here. I'm gonna go with this stuff here. It's a little large, but it'll work. Crank sensor cleaned up, a new O ring on there. Get this thing put back together. Plug it in. There it is. Plugged in. Clean. This one goes over there. This one. And this one. It's all back together. You can clear the codes.